Hey, welcome back, everybody, to my podcast, episode number 42 with Gianmarco Pozzeco. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, we talked about his playing times. Uh, we started off talking about the game in Athens 2004 against Lithuania in particular, but also about the preparation for the final because we were trying to be constructive. And we talked about the lessons he learned when he became a head coach early on, the expectations he has from captains. He told a nice story from the national team of Italy uh, about the captainship. Uh, also, his time as an assistant coach and the lessons he learned of what things to do, what things not to do, how things that he would like to do differently. And uh, yeah, lots of gems in there, lots of funny stories. I hope you enjoy his charisma. I hope you enjoy this episode. Please share, like it, comment it, and you know what to do. See you soon. Bye. All right, Gianmarco Pozzeco, how are you? Hi, Ben. I'm good. Fine. Thank you. And you? I'm good. I'm sweating a little bit. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Before the game, <laughs> and we have we have a very similar uh, um, uh, uh, wrinkle here. I have a I have a, Maz, a Maserati wrinkle. You see that? Did they you? Did they tell you? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have a, I don't have a Maserati at home. But I... <laughs> My president, our president of federation, got the Maserati. So proud of that. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. How are you today? Again, you know, like as I told you before, uh, I got a daughter. Uh, she's she's born like 16 of February. So, as I told you, my my, my life is totally changed. But I was disaster before. I'm still disaster. But uh, you know, like my daily is totally changed. So first things first. Congratulations on that. How 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 did it change your life in 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 the first month? Well, you know, like you realize that. Uh, uh, everything that you have to do during the day is like uh, is change, you know. Like uh, first of all, you have, you wake up and you watch how she feel. Uh, you are totally focused on her, you know. Like you have the feeling that she needs you, and so you got like a big responsibility, you know. Like whenever I coach and 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 I start to have like. Uh, more or less always a great relationship with my players I, I say that uh, I treat them like uh, sons you know and yeah. uh, but uh, in Italy they, they, they are joking with me because they said but you have no kids so uh, you, you don't know which is the, the relationship with, <laughs> with uh, and now I I understand that uh, I didn't said something wrong you know like I have really more or less the same relationship of course uh, i cannot i i can have my daughter different because she's like this and um, miro bilan or melly are <laughs> much more huge so <laughs> the relationship is just different because of the size of uh but um, you know like uh, yeah, for me my in my opinion uh you have to be not selfish, you know, to be coach or father is the same. Uh, you have to give your best to 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 help in this case. Of course, my daughter has the best life that he can have, that uh, she can have. If you understand what I mean? So yeah. Play, yeah. Same. yeah, now that makes sense. It makes sense. It's a, it's a different investment. It's a different, different uh, empathy that you have for, for people, I assume. I have no kids, so I can I can talk only how you used to talk, <laughs> but... <laughs> I have no idea how it feels like, um, but I, for for our podcast today, I prepared four quarters like I do usually for head coaches okay. and uh, one background, one uh, just about the, your your player's career. Okay. Then we jump to head coaching because as I as I saw, you started a head coach before you became an assistant coach. Coincidentally, yeah. because after you stopped playing, you went you 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 had a short break and then you became a head coach. And then we will finish with uh, assistant coach questions. Of course. And, and then we will go into some ATOs. I will draw up some ATOs for you, some quick quick questions, and you will answer me as quickly as possible. Okay, okay. sounds good. About, about the background, just quickly, uh, most people know you, but why basketball and not soccer in a soccer country when you grew up uh, with a, a player with your size? Normally, you know, the guys go into soccer in, in, in Italy. How, how did you choose basketball? So simple, because my father was a basketball player. Uh, my, my father is like almost two meters and uh, unfortunately my mom is like she's like this so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know like I, I grow up it, 
with, with the basketball in my in my house, you know. I, it, sometimes they ask me, uh, when, when do you start to play? And, and I answer all the time, when do you start to walk? Uh, you cannot remember. Yeah. And uh, I, ca- I cannot remember Jamarco without basketball. Yeah. Uh, then uh, you said like a big true, you know, like I live in a country where soccer is uh, everything. And uh, in 1982, uh, uh, football national team won the world champion in, in Spain. And uh, I was following the, the championship and uh, I started to play soccer also. And uh, I have like strange story, you know, because I, I played both uh, until when I was 17. And then my father, that he was also coach. Uh, uh, one day during the summer before the, the season started, he told me, you cannot play both. both. Uh, still, uh, your your body is like uh, older, and uh, you have to choose between basketball or soccer. And uh, I had two options to play with the bushy team that I, I was playing with in soccer, or to go to play with him in uh, let me say uh, fifth division. That was in any case like good option. And he told me like, okay, tomorrow you have to give me and uh, the answer. You know, like, uh, and I was sure to choose to go to play with, for him, you know. And uh, But the next day he came home from the office and uh, uh, he started to eat because he's like, he's fat, so he loves to eat. And uh, he didn't ask me anything. And I was thinking, you know, like I was ready to answer, you know, I will come <laughs> to play with you. And uh, I was proud and didn't say anything. And then he was going out, he was going back to the office he was opening the door and then he turned and he said, so did you choose, uh, did you choose soccer? No? And uh, I said, yes, of course. Uh, then I started to play soccer and I started to play basketball. That is so unusually because like most of the players that then have like good career. When you are like 17, you are most of the time already a star. And yeah. I, was, I was not even basketball player, you know, so I stopped to play for three months and then I came back because uh, the team of my brother needs a point guard. So, but I have like uh, it's it's a little bit strange, and uh, and so I played both. But I choose basketball because of my father, of course, because yeah. he was basketball player and coach. Uh, and my my brother started to play when he was six, uh, mini basket, and so it was let me say natural. Similar to me, I, I my father was also player and then coach, and I grew up in Germany in a soccer country, and I uh, I played I played basketball and soccer growing up uh, at the same time in more soccer in school, not not necessarily in a club, but I had I had a tryout in the club and they wanted me. I played without soccer shoes and they wanted me. They said we're gonna buy you soccer shoes. I scored <laughs> I scored three goals and I was I was very good at soccer, but then. My father had me decide early, you know, my father also made me decide when I was like, uh, I think it was maybe when I was 11 or something like that. And he, he said, basketball, soccer, you can have only one, you know, and I don't know if that was good or not, but I'm not complaining. Things turn out well, yeah. but I also, I also was going back and forth. I always had a love for soccer, uh-huh. but at the end, basketball, basketball was the the thing for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I love to play basketball more than, than soccer which is the reason, the reason, uh, in my opinion, by so, so easy, you know, like you got one ball for 11 players in basketball, you got one ball for five players. So <laughs> more or less, <laughs> you play more, more. you play more, you have, yeah, more, you have more ball, you know, like, and then you're a point guard. So it's like, uh, maybe the, the, the only sports in, 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 you know, like discipline that, uh, the point guard received the ball every time in offense for first and then he has to decide everything you know so uh there is nothing in 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 soccer of course like if you are like uh middle court you you can get like more the ball than than offensive player but yeah basketball is like uh you are involved all the time in office in defense i i love because of that yeah you're as as a point guard you're you i mean you're basically controlling the game so when when you were yeah you you it's in your hands basically but in as as a, if we go to your player's career and you know I have to I have to because I have a lot of listeners from Lithuania I have to talk about it I have to ask you but I also from from 
you know, I don't want to go too deep into the game on 2004 uh, <laughs> because it's, it's in everybody's memory, Lithuania, Italy, <laughs> Um, you know, you you control the game. You played you played you played a great game, and and you guys made it to the final. Okay, so everybody knows that. Everybody understands that. But I want to be more critical of the of the question that I want to ask because I don't want I don't like to have simple questions. So for me, because winning in the semifinal uh, and making it to the final, an emotional semifinal, right? It was an emotional win. It was a yeah. it was a it was a very very. Um, uh, hard fought win and the preparation for the final after such a such a game is very difficult to control your emotions to put your emotions back in into your into your stomach and into your into your body and then be mentally prepared for the final because uh, we i i got i was fortunate with the national team to be in two finals after we made the one in the semi-final in 2013 2015 and i can tell especially 2013 we we didn't have enough emotions left to play in the final. You know, 2015, it was the same. We 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 qualified for Olympics. We we beat uh, Serbia in the semifinal, and it was an overflow of emotion. And yeah. then to put the emotions back in for the final, it's very difficult to focus back in. And teams that were in the finals before, like in 2013, France lost in the final, uh, the Eurobasket before. They know what it feels like to to lose, you know, to be pre- not unpre- unprepared emotionally. How did you prepare? How did you guys prepare for that final? How did you guys control the emotions? Do you feel like there was something after after the semifinal win that you could have done different to prepare for the final? Okay, first of all, ben, you're right, hundred percent. First of all, Benas, you have to understand that World Championship or European Championship totally different. Uh, in Olympic Games, whenever you win the semifinal, you're already unbelievably happy. Yeah. Because you go on the podium. Yeah. It's the, the first goal that you have, like whenever you you, you approach to Olympic Games. European uh, Championship or World Championship is different. You know, if you are like third in European Championship, let me say it doesn't doesn't count, doesn't matter. You know, you're not happy because in, in in Olympic Games, it's totally different. So whenever you win the semifinal, and especially with the team that is underdog as we were, uh, of course, we are like already satisfied, let me say. And then uh, after the game, we had uh, doping control and Basile uh, cannot do it. And uh, we came at... Uh, we came back at, uh, at the hotel uh, so late, um, and then we have to play the next day. Mm. Argentina pl- played against America before the NAS, so uh, this is not an excuse, of course, but uh, they have like a little bit more time to, to recover. But uh, in one moment in the final, we were like 55 to 52. And uh, we didn't score for five minutes, both of us. And uh, uh, to the end, in my opinion, we were in the same situation. Uh, we beat you guys that you were like so good. And we were totally underdog as Argentina against uh, the USA. So definitely we were in the same situation mentally. They, they could recover a little bit more than us, but in any case, they were happy because they 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 supposed to to lose against USA. So we were not in perfect mentally uh, condition to play that game, and was not really uh, the semi final. In my opinion, against Lithuania was amazing game, amazing game uh, against uh, Argentina in the final. We could beat them uh, because it was not so high level game you understand what i mean yeah it's yeah. you guys we scored like uh, i i i remember like uh, 17 on 34 threes so we should and um, unbelievable and uh, we were we were focused we were concentrated we were like uh tough you know let me yeah. say yeah. Uh, we had nothing to lose we were underdog we were uh, uh good mix between young guys and and experienced you, players you, so. you guys you guys played free it was it was a free free uh with with confidence with a lot of confidence and and 
you know, when the shots fall, it's a contagious, it's a contagious thing. Everybody starts feeling more confident when everybody's, everybody's clicking. Yeah. In, in my opinion is most of the time boxer says that whenever you have to fight again, one guy that looks crazy is so, let me say like tough to, uh, and in, in that moment, in my opinion, Lithuanian uh, players realized that Basile was not normal <laughs> and uh, I was not normal. And so we could do something on the court that was not really, let me say, like uh, under control. And yeah. uh, for example, we were up more or less 40 minutes, but in one moment in the fourth quarter, uh, Lithuanian went up by two, three points. And in that moment, one normal team mentally lose the game because if you are underdog, you go on, you go like, you are like, uh, you're playing great. And uh, let me say like, you are doing everything perfect. But uh, in one moment, you realize that uh, your opponent is better than you. Uh, you stop to play. Yeah, but you collapse. You have that feeling because we were not normal. We yeah. were not, let me say, like, worried about that. Uh, normal team can, can lose that game. Uh, and, and, and they were surprised. Because mm -hmm. in my opinion, in one moment, they start to think, okay, we, now we beat them 15. Yeah. But... Uh, Bazo continue to score. We continue to play defense, and, and so for just two, two questions for you as a point guard. Uh, I you, you're you like to sh to to make no look passes. You make the flashy passes. You like to have you have, you look like you had fun on the on the, on the court. What's the uh, two questions here? Was it passing or scoring that you liked enjoyed more? First question, uh, and then the second follow up question in in terms of that because. When you like to pass, it looks like you really enjoy passing. Did you feel like you were hard to control as a player? Were you were you difficult for a coach to control and to to uh, uh, to coach basically? To coach myself? Yeah. <laughs> okay, listen. Um, as I told you before, when I was seventeen, I stopped to play, and uh, so uh, until let me say like uh, twenty years old. I was totally unprofessional. I didn't play for money. I didn't play because I was thinking to have like great career. I played just for fun. Yeah. And so I played just for fun until when I was 20. And when I started to play in first division, when I was 21, sorry, in second division, and then in first division, I didn't change. It was too late. Yeah to change my mentality. I continue to play for fun, but they pay me. That's the only difference at the end of the month, I have to go to take my check. And I was, let me say, first time really super, but hey, they pay me to enjoy. And so it was like wonderful. And I didn't change uh, this kind of mentality all my career, but this was something amazing for myself, but it was something so strange for my coaches. Why? Because they saw on the court, one guy is that so short, really midget, and that he enjoy really enjoy on the court. He has no pressure, and 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 so it was not possible to control him. How you can control one guy that is enjoying and is doing? He has to do something different because he's so short, yeah. and he's not so short by plays like let me say before uh, the uh, really short pointer cannot score more than eight points, let me say. I was short pointer, not with great skills, athletics, but I could score 20 uh, just because I won, you know, I could try, as you said, yeah, yeah. something extra, you know, something that uh, unusual. And and so there was like mix that, uh, in my opinion, uh, gave me like really nice career uh i really enjoyed all my life but of course for coaches was not bad not the best option you understand how, how would you coach yourself 
let me say that it's totally different, you know, like uh, uh, right, right now, in my opinion, uh, in Europe, for example, uh, in one season, I have like 27 points average. Uh, and I was not like super superstar. I was not, let me say, Oscar, yeah. uh, Michael A. Richardson, or, you know, those kind of players, you know, like uh, Danilovic, Georgievich. I had not that talent. Uh, but uh, to win, you know, like to lead uh, the, the, to, the to, to be the leader of the scoring points, uh, uh, you 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 need to score 27, 27 points average. Right now, you win like the, the, the standing with the eighteen points. You understand what I mean? So, mm -hmm. basketball is totally changed. Uh, mm -hmm. Every player played 20, 20 minutes, especially in SCB. If you watch uh, SCB stats, everybody play between eighteen minutes and twenty two. Yeah. The best player on the, on the worst player, they got like just four minutes. When I played basketball, Danilo played 40 minutes every every fucking game. Sorry, but they have to tell you. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so, you know, like you have like much more responsibility, especially offensively. Yeah. Uh, so you need, let me say, like players that uh, has that kind of talent. Right now, you don't need it. And especially... Uh, those kind of players, they have like that talent, but of course, it's not so easy to to approach with them. They they like we said, they act like like star because they are star. Right now, if somebody act like star, they they play twenty three minutes, they score not fifteen points but eighteen. So, as a coach, you think why you have to let me say like. Treat him different and cannot control him just for three points more. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I gave you like some numbers, but this is just to let you understand. When I was basketball player, you know, like Danilovic could score 40 points, uh, Georgievich could score 40 points, uh, Marcelon, yeah. uh, Sabonis, uh, they were like much better than everybody else. Carnicio was blah, blah, blah. When right now, now it's different, you know, like more or less all the player. Okay, there is the guys that is a little bit better, but yeah. uh, and then if you are like much, much better, you are in NBA, of course, because if you are like much better, you play in NBA. When I was basketball player, Marcelloni is playing NBA, Sabonis, Petrovic, Paspali, Divac, and maybe those two, three players that I forget. But right now you got like 100, 110 FIBA players playing NBA. So uh, you have to count on not so big stars. So more or less you don't upset to, to have one player that, that is not so professional and yep. is that not as a star because that kind of player give you just like three points more than than one guy that's so good, let me say, but, like so easy to. But to would you would you would you try to control yourself as a as a, as a uh, as a point guard if you had a point guard like you, or would you would you give him the freedom and and uh, let let? No, it's not possible, Ben. Yeah, like, yeah. One time I tell you a story. <laughs> okay, I have to tell you the truth. I was not. I was like. I was a little bit crazy, but also a little, little bit idiot, you know, and. Uh, uh, in 2002, I played with Varese, 2001, sorry. And uh, it was that season that I could score like uh, many points. So, and I was the best player of the team by far. And in one moment after, let me say like six, seven games, uh, the coach calls, calls me after start of the week. It was like Tuesday. And... Uh, uh, we were in his office and he told me like this, uh, from today you have to become like an example, but in defense. I was not so famous. I was not uh, Maldini, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I watched him, I said, uh, okay, from today I will not come back in defense. 
I will stop on the I mean the court line. And he said he, he was thinking that I was joking. You know? Then we go on the court to practice, and first five minutes I didn't come back to the <laughs> in defense, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking like this, uh, my teammates. And in one moment, they asked me, what are you doing? They have to play defense also for me because like I play in offense also for them. And uh, <laughs> you can pass me the, the, <laughs> this bullshit, you know, like. And uh, so uh, it's not possible to control um, some players. Uh, was not was not possible. You so you to, manage. You just manage. You manage. You yeah, manage. You, have, per, you manage personalities. In my opinion, you have to to have to find a way uh, to convince them to do it something. If you tell, for example, I'm I'm reading a lot of book to understand how, how I have to manage my my daughter, and uh, until she's twelve, I was reading just this morning. You can tell her what she has to do it. And what she has not to do, it. but after twelve, she will decide by herself. And uh, uh, you, you know, I was that kind of player that I was living uh, all the time basketball after twelve years old. So I didn't. <laughs> you cannot tell me what I have to do, <laughs> but you can suggest to her before until she's twelve what she will be good to her to do it. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, you have to do the same with the, with the basketball player with big personality and big character. You have to talk to them and convince them that uh, that he has to do to do it something or not. Uh, you have to get like, of course, you have, they have to trust you. You have to don't lie to them. You have not to lie. You have to tell him all the time the truth. And of course, you have not just to ask him. For example. In basketball, most of the time, the coaches, the coaches just ask you, hey, play good defense, play hard, uh, sacrifice yourself, go to the rebound. They will never tell you, okay, don't worry. You can take like five uh, threes, even if you miss all of uh, those shots. So they cannot give you, they, they never give you like something free. Okay, do decide, don't worry. What do you want to do on the court? Okay, but decide by yourself. Uh, with that kind of player, you have to do it. You have to show them that you trust them. And then sometimes uh, you 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 ask them to do it something different that they want to do it. So they probably they will do it to the end. Mm -hmm. That happened to me. Last year of my career, I was playing with Meo Sacchetti, that is uh, the, the national team coach before than me. And he treated me, this, he treated me more or less in as I told you before, like he gave me freedom. And then sometimes, for example, he came to me and said, on Monday, practice on Monday, said like, hey, please, Pops, can you run with the guys uh, athletic on athletic uh, uh, track field? And I was not used to do that. I was 35 and, and I said, babe, why? I said, please, can you do it? And then I, you know, like I, uh, I trust them. I, I, I feel that he trusts me. Yeah. And so whenever sometimes he asks me, like, a, like a pleasure, you know. Yeah. I said, of course, man. Don't worry, I will do it. Yeah. You, you have to trust them to get the trust back in, in, in other situations. So let me ask you this, as a, as a head coach, if we go to the head coaching part, uh, you, you saying, you're talking about trust and, and, and connecting. How do you? connect with players because you're you're definitely a player's coach because as, as a former player and you you feel like you connect with the players on the court off the court how do you connect with the players but you still have the authority to coach them without getting too close to them you know what's what's the what's there's a fine line there's a fine line as an assistant coach it's something else you know as a head coach it's yeah. it's also because I I also like to connect with players because I feel what they feel you know but there's also a line where you have to also maintain to not lose your respect or authority you know what I mean how do you how do you maintain that okay first of all you have to recruit mm. uh, you have to recruit like right players not players as basketball skills but uh, human skills. Then I tell you a story. First time that I coach, I was in Capital London in second division, and uh, uh, we had to go to play close than Rome. And so we flow, and then we get the bus. Uh, and when we were going to the bus, one my players 
was in front of uh, front of me and he was going to the bus on the stairs. And usually I joke all the time with, with my teammates, with my staff, and I want to, you know, hit him with my hands on his boards, definitely. And when I was doing like this, you know, he turned and he saw me. And so I don't think that never happened that your coach, coach to the players do this joke. You understand? Yes. Yeah. So he was watching me like, hey, what are you doing? You know, and I did like this. You know? <laughs> And then I went to the bus and, and I was so worried because I was thinking, as you said, uh, this kind of, you know, natural relationship that I need to have with my players, uh, can it work? And then I I called Meo Sacchetti and, and I asked him, and I said, like, I'm so worried. I did uh, this, this, and this with the players. We were on the bar, blah, blah, blah. I explained him everything was was going on. And, uh, and he told me, like, uh, which is the problem? I said, but, okay, I, you know, like, probably some players, they will not understand and they will have not uh, the right uh, relationship with myself uh, as a coach, not as a human being, as a coach. And he said, okay, but uh, how many players uh, will have like the wrong uh, uh, behavior with you? And um, and I said, like, I don't know, like maybe five on 1,000. And so he said, like, okay, for those five videos, you want to change uh, your kind of relationship that uh, for you is like uh, necessary? And so I said, nah. And and so I feel free to 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 have like uh, the relationship that I want to have with the uh, with you know with those guys with uh, my players and uh, but it's not so it's not so easy start of the season whenever I start the season with the with the national team or or with the club uh, because for me is already. Uh, natural, you know, like everything is is uh, is an habit. Let me say, like I have that kind of relationship with my player. But whenever we, I have like a, a new players, uh, first two three days, they they don't understand. Like they they are like, and they are thinking, what is this? And is it is it that guy? Yeah. And when I'm on the court. For example, when I start to coach, I did uh, a big mistake. I, sometimes I was so uh, uh, under control and I screamed to them. And so they didn't realize who was uh, the real Jamarco. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So I canceled the second part and I right now I never scream to them. I never scream to them, except they do something that uh, against teammates... Uh, they are not on time for specific uh, rules that I put on 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 our daily, but I never scream to them because of basketball mistakes. Never, never. Even if they throw the ball, with, they kick the ball with the. Uh, so that uh, change everything because they know that I'm real. You understand what I mean? Yes. I never change yeah. all the time. That guy, maybe then is not like let me say like their the favorite coach. But uh, of course, they cannot say it. Okay, you are like uh, there. There are two Jamarco. No, there is just one. That is joke. He tried to help. I tell you. I tell you a story that is so funny. When I start to coach in Sassari, we start to win a lot of games. When I decide, let me say, to put a little bit on the side, uh, Justin Carter, that is an amazing player, is a really lovely guy. But uh, I was thinking that I have to have more short rotation. And he started to play less. And before he was, he was like all the time on starting five, blah, blah, blah. Then he played like, let me say, a couple of games. He didn't play at all. And after 10 days, maybe two weeks, not more. No, 10 days. Uh, I was going to the to the practice. 
and I, I meet him and he asked me, coach, can we talk? And I was thinking that moment, I'm so stupid <laughs> because I put him a little bit on the side and I didn't talk to him instead of course, Justin. And we went to the a small office and, uh, and he, and I was worried really because I, 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 I was thinking that I did a big mistake to don't talk to him before then shoot, that, that took that decision. And he told me, hey, don't worry, coach. I understand what you are doing. Uh, short rotation. Uh, don't worry. Uh, but uh, the only the only uh, thing that I don't like, and I I I tried. I want to ask you to change again. Why you don't joke anymore with me? Uh... <laughs> he said, Justin, you are you are right. You know why? And I explained to him why I didn't joke with him. Listen, I put you a little bit on the side and I doesn't feel, let me say, comfortable to joke with you because it was, can be unfair. Could, could, you know, you could start to think that it was not unfair, that yeah. it was unfair. And he said, no, 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 Oi, please continue to treat me as before. Uh, don't worry. Basketball is something different, but you are like, we have like good relationship and we can continue to have like same behavior. Interesting. And, in that moment, you know, and then we have a uh, 26, 23 victories in a row, you know, like when, whenever you have to, you have like, let me say like the right person, a uh, person that understand uh, my kind of mentality, you can have a really a nice relationship. And I'm still in contact with him. Uh, he was in Zara, blah, blah, blah. And I push. Welcome mercy to sign him because in my opinion, in any case, he's a really good player. Yeah. And so that's amazing in my opinion. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a great insight from a player to honestly demand your personality, not your coaching, but your personality. He wants yeah. to have, he wants to see you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so as a head coach and regarding to your staff, how do you like to split up the work amongst your staff? How do you like to, for them to prepare the games for you? Do you like to have one guy do all the scouting preparation and two assistant coaches uh, navigate the preparation. Do you like to split the, the do you like to, the, the, to the, both assistant coaches some part of the work? How do you like to split up the work uh, in preparation for games? Watch in national team, I have like three, four, almost five assistants. Uh, one is the legend Charlie de Calcati, that is, let me say, like senior coach. So it's not involved on in preparation of the games, blah, blah, blah. It's just like the guys that watch everything from, from outside. And he gave me, he gave me like a really uh, important uh, uh, suggests. Um, the other guys, I love to put them, let me say, as a, as a team. I don't give them like uh, specifically uh uh, responsibility, but I want that uh, all of them has to feel, uh, you know, like uh, to feel uh, with the same responsibility to build something that that I, that I need that the players need to prepare the game. So they yeah. do all together, and then they come to me and they tell me like, "Hey, we have to do this, this, and this." Yeah, and then we talk about if it's so if you something so you, or or, uh, or not. But uh, of course, then I got like the, the the first assistant because if I'm a jack and happen a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, like uh, uh, they, I, I I go to the to the room. Where they they they, they work and uh, I see that they really try to uh, like together to find the solution to find to find uh, the the best uh, uh, adjust that uh, we can have it uh, to win the next game. Mm -hmm. And what's what's your mm -hmm. what's your opinion on the <laughs> captain position? How do you how do you feel? The importance of the captain is in the national because in, in the national team is more important yeah, probably than in the club. But what's your relationship with the captain and what do you expect from him? 
Yeah. Okay, tell your story, uh, Venus. Uh, we were, we were. I was in Milano. I was assistant of Vetto, and I became uh, Italian national coach. So uh, I went immediately to Melli, and uh, and I told him. Uh, we were on the plane. I said, like, listen, I start to, I, I will be coach of the national team. And I think that you have to be captain. I know that uh, Gigi is the captain right now, but, uh, um, you know, you need to have, like, a uh, strong position on the team. And uh, Gigi, in any case, uh, everybody respect him, blah, blah, blah. But you will play probably more than, more than him. So, and he told me, no, no, you are completely out. I mean, this is something that uh, uh, we have to manage different. And I said, why? Gigi has to be the captain. And I said, okay, don't worry. I will talk to him. And uh, if he will tell me that uh, he needs to be captain, he will be captain. But uh, no, 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 you don't have like Gigi has to be the captain. Uh, because for sure he, he want to be the captain and he, is, he has to be the captain. And I said, okay, I would, I would go to talk with him. And so Gigi, of course, was in the same plane with us because we were all together with, with me, with Olympia. And um, and I went to Gigi, I said, listen, Gigi, what do you think, like, if uh, Meli will become the captain? I said, like, okay, don't worry. If he's like this, I will not come to national team. Straight. <laughs> and Gigi <laughs> is so polite and, and nice person. And I said, okay, okay, don't worry. Uh, as as Melly said, like this is the most the biggest stupid idea that I ever had in my mind. So don't worry, forget everything. You will be the captain. <laughs> and uh, and so you know, like uh, in my opinion, the coaches make a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes, millions of mistakes. But uh, sometimes the player helps you, and uh, doesn't matter if the captain or not. And then, believe me, uh, Gigi is the captain, and I have like so unbelievable relationship with him. His daughter got just one year more more than my daughter, so uh, <laughs> I ask him every day for basketball. But I have to treat my daughter. <laughs> and but you know, like uh, I treat. They ask me uh, sometimes how you treat the stars. You know, like, uh, it's much more difficult, as we said before, to treat the stars than normal players. And I said, I treat all my players as stars, but I treat all my assistant as they are the uh, star. I treat all my, all the guys that work for Federation, I treat them as a star. So I, I don't treat different uh, players uh, instead of captain. Uh, but of course, uh, I go to Gigi because is like in, is in basketball many years. He played in NBA, he played in, for Fener, he played for Milano. He got like a lot of experience. So I, I let me say, I use him a lot more than young player, of course. But uh, the respect and the, let me say, that the feeling that I have with the player is more or less is the same with everybody. Okay, so you mentioned a little bit the assistant coach role in, in Milano. Uh, and I was going to talk to you about the assistant coach part. Uh, I was going to talk to you about the how assistant did you, coach part. What did you learn from your time as an assistant coach that helps you to be a head coach now? What was what were the things that you learned? Yeah, because head, you shifted back from being a head coach at first, then you went to assistant coach, be assistant coach at Sedevita. You became a head coach again, then an assistant became, coach. What are the things that you learned from, coach, from being an assistant coach to have a better feeling for the head coaching position that helps you now? that helps you now what well, first of all this is a suggest to all the basketball player if you want to become a coach if you want to become head coach uh, you need to be assistant uh, at least for one two years uh, because to be assistant gave you the, the give you the, the opportunity to watch an entire season with much more relax as a as a head coach you manage everything but you are like under stress uh, and everything you know like uh, all all the stress that you're living uh, doesn't give you like the opportunity to 
to understand if you are doing something good or bad. When you become assistant, when you are assistant, it, I, I tell you something that, uh, let me say like, would be strange, but it's not. Uh, in, in, especially in, 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 in my position that I, let me say, consider myself a little bit strange coach, uh, you understand much more what you don't want to do than one of what you want to do mm -hmm. on the on the court with your players. Uh, working with the uh, Mercic, that is amazing coach, and of course with the legend as Ettore. Uh, of course, I am. I let me say that I learned a lot, but uh, I understood that my type of uh, basketball, my style, my style, my style of uh, uh, lead the team. Uh, is something that, in my opinion, can work. Uh, so, if you are like a system, uh, you understand what you don't want to do. Uh, I can tell you, I, I, I can tell you like many examples. Uh, for example, I cannot manage manage uh, a team with a lot of players. For example, in Cedevita, uh, we have like to compete uh, in, let me say, like three competitions. Uh, first uh, years was like every no second season, we had like Euro Cup, uh, Aba League, and the Croatian national team. So national championship, and so uh, the club decide to has uh, two split teams. With with young guys that they that we can use it uh, whenever we need it, um, so we can we can share the players sometimes. Uh, but then to the end, well, Velko decide Mercy decide to to have just one team and manage it differently. Uh, in Milano, of course, because we had last year, if I. Uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, 84 games. So, of course, you need a uh, uh, big roster. But uh, I think, Benas, that, uh, that uh, I'm not able to, to manage too many players. First of all, because whenever you, have, you want to have really a nice relationship with the players, one my president told me a smart things uh, in Sassari. Uh, president to the players give the money and, and coach give the minutes. So they respect you because of that. And it, this is true. And so to have like, definitely to have like good relationship with the players, you have to give them minutes. If no, if you don't want to give them like a lot of minutes or the minutes that they deserve it, uh, you have to have, let me say, a professional relationship. Mm -hmm. You cannot have it like, as I want to have friendly relationship and I don't give you minutes because the players will not understand. They yeah. will not have that kind of, uh, you know. And uh, so I want to coach players that play a lot. Uh, they, they have to be happy. They have to be satisfied. So I will never, even if I will coach, and I hope that will happen, uh, I will coach in every one day, I will not be a team like with 15 players. I will be the team, let me say, like with 10 really good players and two, three, four young guys that they are already happy to be there, uh, to be on the team. Uh, so the, the, this is... It's something that I understood as a assistant, you know, like the players, of course, they complain if they are not playing a lot. Then as assistant, you try to to let them understand that uh, the coach is forced to have a lot of players because you get a lot of injuries, a lot of games, a lot of, you, that you need to turn over, you know, understand what I mean? So, but uh, I will try to, to, to manage everything differently. And... Um, that's something that you understand watching from outside, different kind of uh, uh, 
uh, perspective. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. So, so exactly that. That the you you as a assistant coach, you have a different bond with the players. You you feel you see they come to you to complain yeah. about the head coach. You know, so you have to manage all the voices. You have to manage. You have to be the filter for the coach of yeah, of, course. of how to tell the head coach. And now, with your experience as a player, as a head coach, as an assistant coach, when did you feel and when did you see that the player actually deserves to play more and he needs some help because he's mentally he's not he's not where he should be, so the coach doesn't trust him, you know? Right? So yeah. so how did you feel that when what was the situation that you saw that that the player actually needs help and how how did you help them the most to get back on track and out of their slump and for, to make the head coach believe again that he can play? You're fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word that happened, like as assistant. You know, when the coach starts to, to don't believe in one player and the players comes to you to ask you, hey, why I'm, I'm not playing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's the, this, and, this, and this, you have to tell him the truth because the coach doesn't like you, man. <laughs> 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 and... Uh, but <laughs> you know, Benas, it's tough. You know, like listen, this is the truth, Benas. In my opinion, that whenever you talk about basketball, it's just opinions because, like, uh, you know, like you cannot, you cannot. Uh, let me say, like, go to watch uh, Obradovic uh, practice, and then you do the same, and you got same results. No, <laughs> it's not possible so or at Messina or whatever um, but it's much more easy to have not good relationship with the players to handle everything is much more easy to treat them let me say every time bad so whenever you treat him so bad nothing change yeah. but whenever you 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 wish and and, 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 and and you want to have like good relationship with the player, everything becomes much more difficult. Even as assistant, if you got like good relationship with the player and the player come to ask you the truth, like why I, I, I'm not playing. If you are like, if you have a good relationship with him, you have to tell him the truth. If you are like, let me say, if you got no good relationship with him, you don't care, so you can lie. You tell him, I don't know. Uh, because you are like uh, not in shape, I don't know. Like, but uh, but you know, like uh, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, you have to be, in my opinion, you have to be all the time honest. You cannot lie in them. Maybe you in in Italy in Italiano we said like omertoso. Uh, omertoso it means that <clears throat> you don't tell the truth. You don't tell them the truth, but you don't lie them. You understand what I mean? So, yeah. gray like area, said, gray like, area. You know, but you can use that, in my opinion, few times uh, in in one season. Uh, then, to the end, the player are not stupid. Then another thing that that the another thing Benas that I hate the most that all the. All the coaches think, most of the coaches think that basketball players are not so smart. And this is, okay, let me say, can, I can understand if the coach was not a basketball player because he's not involved. But whenever you were a basketball player and you said like all the basketball players are stupid, I, 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 got, I got crazy because I said, but you, are, you were a basketball player, so you are stupid. And I said, no, 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 it was different. No, no, listen. If every basketball player is stupid, you 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 are you were a basketball player, so you're stupid also. So I don't think the basketball player is stupid. Probably because I was the only really stupid basketball player in the world. So I was the most stupid basketball player in the world. So all the basketball players are, are much more smart than me for sure. So my respect, uh, you know, like my respect is because of. Gianmarco Pozzeco is a basketball player. Uh, but it's so important that that uh, maybe you cannot tell him the truth, but he has to feel that you respect him. Mm -hmm. It's so important, Benas. Because whenever I, I approach to you, I can tell you something that that different than what you are thinking. But if you have the feeling that I respect you, you accept. 
something different. You know, I tell, hey, Venus, why you got Boston jersey behind you and not Lakers, you know? So um, if you respect me and I respect you, we can talk, you know, I'm, Lakers are better than Boston or, but if I don't respect you, you will be mad. Say, hey, come on, man, this is my room. I love Boston. What do you want? You know, like, yeah. so the, the, the most important part for a coaches or assistant is to, sh is to show respect to the players. And whenever you show respect to the players, they will accept even if you will tell him something that they don't want to hear. You understand what I mean, Ben? Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready for my ATOs? <laughs> hey, I'm the worst ATOs ever as a coach. I never draw anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> these are easy. These are easy. That's a just just quick quick uh, question ATOs. Um, so you mentioned something. You mentioned something about the. Uh, truth and this is the one of the first questions that i wanted to ask is there one absolute truth in basketball as you said you know you watch abradovich practice you watch messina practice and then you translate but but apart from that is there some basketball truth that you believe is true everywhere yeah players need confidence okay one country you always wanted to play in spain What country, one country you would like to coach in one day? Serbia. Lithuania. One okay. One advice, advice you can give to players that are still playing right now? Uh, do everything that I didn't do it and it will be everything. Will, oh, don't do it what I did and everything will be perfect. <laughs> Worst worst advice you received as a player? Uh, you know, like <laughs> to be quiet sometimes. You know, with the referees. <laughs> uh, did you ever? Did you ever doubt that Giannis will catch you? <laughs> But this is like so strange story, you know, because I never talk about that. Okay. Uh, I eject, they eject me from the game against Serbia. And so I went out. And uh, I have one big, big, big friend of mine that is from Valencia. My wife is from Valencia. And I meet him in Formentera because I live in Formentera, this little island close to Ibiza. And uh, he's, he's working for Alba Berlino youth team. And uh, I watched the game with him. The rest of the game, I was in the locker room and I, and I, and I watched with, with him and my doctor, doctor of the national team. And when we went out, I <laughs> jumped on, on, on Antetokounmpo. And, uh, but you know, like I had the feeling that he was prepared because I was just running as, Yeah, <laughs> and he could understand that I, I want to jump. And then I jump and he was ready, fortunately, because if I injured his bag or whatever, probably now I was out of basketball for the rest of my life. Um, <laughs> and and then I, I hug him and, and, and he was really laughing, you know, like not faking. Like <laughs> he was like, You know, he was surprised and he was laughing, you know. And then I said, like, I love you. And friend of mine, uh, <laughs> friend of mine, he was he was like close to us and he he is lapping on, on his ass and he said, I love you too, man. <laughs> to <up> to Kumpo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and so you know, like and, and yesterday I was Uh, I was in Federation and they told me that uh, we were the first uh, as national team in, in the European Championship, we were the first on, on social media. And I said, of course, because I was jumping on the <laughs> Tukumbo and that's something that... <laughs> But uh, he, was, he was ready, he was ready, he was ready, he was ready. What's I could the... dunk on him, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> He's nice What's... person. Then the next day I saw him and I said like, Hey, sorry, Mr. Antetokounmpo, you know, like, uh, I was so happy because we were winning the game. And so, no, 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 you gave me like, 
a, a positive energy and so mm-hmm. it was he's a really nice guy what's the great life look to you what what's the great life look to you uh, in which sense how how does it how do you imagine if you say i lived a great life what's the great life to you Uh, I want to be in basketball, involved in basketball, a couple of years, a little bit more. And then my dream is to buy a house in far from the city and uh, have a pretty quiet uh, life. That's because, you know, all my life I was in the middle of the everything, you know, like party games travel fans uh, you know and i was like all the time ready to 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 live 100% uh, what the, the 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 life gave me you know but right now i need to be just quiet with my family and nothing else and the last one for you that i ask everybody what's what's your favorite failure of your career that you feel you failed At, at any point of your career, but you learned the biggest lesson from from that failure. Huh. Uh, in uh, when I start to play really uh, good basketball, in that moment the best point guard in Italy was David De Bonova, and uh, I hate him because we were totally different, and uh, he was so smart point guard he really controlled everything uh he was a genius on the court and i was totally different you know he, he, he didn't score a lot of points he has not like great statistics but he, he managed the, the team as the coach want uh, and i was the wild player you know totally different than him so we were in competition and uh, I started to I start to hate him, even if I didn't know him. And then in 1998, we were together in the national team. Of course, we didn't talk each other first two weeks, uh, first month, because then we went to the to Athens to play the European the World Championship, and uh, Borja Tanevich put us together in the room. And I went to him and said, "I will not be. I will not stay in the room with with with, with David. I don't want to go with him." change rooms, do whatever you want, but I uh, will not sleep in the same room with him. And Borussia, that is so tough, said, go in the room and shut up. And uh, I went. And uh, the first night, we were five in the morning, crying, laughing. Uh, and he's one of the best person that I meet in basketball. So, uh, which is the sense uh, that... Uh, Uh, that you have to know one person before then, then, then have an opinion about him. So uh, don't don't let you uh, let me say like don't judge a person. Uh, yeah, don't yeah, judge a person. Don't, don't judge a book by his cover. Especially if you don't know him very well. Yeah, mm. that's a great story. That's a great story. Yeah, Potts, thank you very much. It was very very very, very good. Good, a lot of good <laughs> stories. Change your t-shirt, put the Lakers next time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Finished, finito. I was, finito. But you know, like, in basketball, everything changed, you know, like, because I was really, of course, when, when we were young, when I was young, there was like Julius Serving, Magic Johnson, um, or Bird, uh, Larry Bird, you have three options. Yeah. Could be fans of Lakers and Magic, uh, Celtics, and, and I choose, I don't know why, Magic and Lakers, and I, my brother was like uh, Julius Serving in Philadelphia. And uh, but right now, you know, if you tell me, do you want to coach uh, Julius Serving, Larry Bird, or Magic Johnson? I choose Larry Bird by far. Wow, so change uh, your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect ending. Perfect ending. <laughs> ciao, Gra- nice. Grazie, gra- grazie mille. Ciao, ciao, ciao. ciao, ciao. ciao.